Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost and in the next few minutes we're going to see how easy it is to remove distracting elements and dust spots in Lightroom Classic. I'm going to start by tapping the Q key in order to access all of the healing panel options. There are three different modes that can be used to select or to create the information that will be used to patch the unwanted area in the image. The clone mode selects a source from within the image and creates an exact copy of it to patch the unwanted area. And this is great if you want an exact duplicate. The healing mode also selects source information from within the image, but it adjusts the colors and tones to try to create a seamless patch. The content aware remove actually fabricates completely new pixels to patch the area. And this is great if the image doesn't necessarily have a lot of good source information to draw from. So we're going to start with the clone mode and I'm going to zoom in and remove this metal between the windows. Now we can adjust the brush size as well as the feather or the softness of the edge and the opacity using these sliders. The opacity is really nice for minimizing a distracting area as opposed to removing it completely. We can also use keyboard shortcuts, so I could use the right bracket to increase the size or the left bracket to decrease the size, and I can add the shift key to either increase or decrease the feather. Now when I click in the image, Lightroom is going to create a circle spot now I can drag either one of these spots in order to reposition them or I can drag on the edge in order to resize the spot. If I want more control I can tap delete in order to delete the spot and then I can hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and click to set down my spot and then drag in order to manually reposition the sample spot anywhere in the image. In order to check the edges, I might want to tap the H key in order to hide the interface. And I can see here that I don't have enough of a feather, so I'm going to increase the feather amount in order to soften the edges of the spot. Next, I want to remove whatever this is in the lower window, but I need to patch a larger area. So I'm going to click and drag out a brush spot. Now after I drag out this brush spot, I can still change the feather as well as the opacity, but I can't change the size. I'll tap the H key in order to view the interface again. And because it's not selecting automatically from the correct location, I'll tap the refresh button. But again, it's not selecting the correct area. So I can also try the forward slash that does the same as the refresh button or I can just manually drag this over to the window on the right. Then I'll tap the H key in order to hide the interface and I'll go ahead and use my arrow keys in order to nudge this into place. Now the edges look good, but if I needed to, I could decrease or increase the feather amount. All right, next I wanna remove this rocky area here to the right of the building. So I'll drag out a brush spot over this area, bringing it all the way down to here. In this case, I'll go ahead and manually reposition this. But I'm not liking the bottom area here, so I'm gonna change the mode by clicking on the healing mode to see if that does a better job. I'll go ahead and click refresh. But again, I don't like the way that it's blending, and I do notice that when I use this tool and it's next to a border. Sometimes we get this kind of bleeding effect where the one area just kind of blends the color into another. So in this case, I will try the content aware remove. Here it's doing a much better job, but if it wasn't, I could go ahead and use the refresh button to have it recalculate the area. Now, because this mode creates new information to patch the unwanted area, when I show the interface by tapping the H key, you'll notice that it doesn't show a source area like the other two modes do. All right, let me just reposition that so that it's not touching the edge there quite as much. And then tap refresh in order to have it re-render the area. All right, let's scoot down. 
I want to remove this metal area so I'll get a little bit smaller of a brush. I'll leave it set to the content aware remove and then just paint over this metal and include this area right down here as well. And then let's remove this pipe. Again, just dragging using that content aware remove. I might include this rock as well and this one on the other side. All right, let's try to get rid of the steps. I'll go ahead and just drag a brush spot over them, including all of the center area here. But because there's not a lot of good source to choose from, even when I click refresh multiple times, it's not doing that great of a job. So you'll notice that I can hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and drag in the photo to select a custom source. So I'm going to drag over this rock area here to tell the tool to only sample from that area. Then I'll tap H in order to hide the edges. And if I see any repeating patterns, I can click and drag within that area and refresh as many times as needed. All right, let's zoom out and I'll use the toggle switch here in order to show a quick before and after. All right, I wanna leave you with five tips before we wrap up. So the first tip, if you want to constrain the brush to a horizontal or to a vertical line, hold down the shift key before you start drawing with the tool and as you drag, Lightroom will constrain the brush. If I want Lightroom to draw a line between two spots, then I can click, then hold down the shift key and click again, and Lightroom Classic will connect the two spots with a straight line. I can continue holding down the shift key and clicking until we make our way all the way over to the right and remove the wire completely. All right, number two, in order to view some of those kind of hard to see dust spots in an image, we can tap the A key or enable the visualize spots and then use the slider in order to adjust the high contrast preview. Here we can see there are a number of spots that I would have missed. In fact, if I zoom in and toggle the A key, we can see that in fact, there they are, but I probably wouldn't have caught those but they definitely would have showed up if I'd printed this image. I'll zoom back out, tap A again, and then quickly remove all of the other small dust spots in the image. Tip number three, if you do have dust spots in multiple images, you can remove the spots on one image like we did here, then choose copy and enable healing, copy that, move to the next image, and even if you've changed the orientation, you can choose paste in order to paste the same healing spots on this image. The fourth tip, to quickly delete a spot, you can hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and then click on a single spot to delete it, or with the Option or Alt key held down, click and drag in order to remove multiple spots. And finally, if you have a spot selected and you want to deselect that selected spot and change the mode for the next spot that you create, you can hold down the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows, and then click on any of the icons for the different spot modes. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.